welcome back. So we found out why the staff motor was uh, not engaging. Basically, it was uh, it stripped all of its internal gears. And the engine was seized. The engine was seized because water was in it. Uh, water was in it because the uh, exhaust manifold gaskets had leaked. Now they'd leaked down. A because there was a little bit of um, unevenness in the mating surfaces, and also because the, uh, the gaskets that had been replaced uh, several months ago were replaced using sealant, which they shouldn't have been. They should have been left dry. Engine's been stripped down. Um, I've found the, um, the the main um, problem was in cylinder side on the port side, so uh, it had a, a quite a, a noticeable rust ring inside the cylinder itself. That's now been um, cleaned out using just wire wool. Uh, no mechanical or sorry, electronic uh, devices at all. So no um, sort of drills, no honing, no nothing. Just purely hand tools only. The cylinder heads have been cleaned up. Uh, they had a little bit of surface corrosion on them. Once they've been cleaned up with a, uh, a rotary wire brush, um, they came up beautifully, no issues at all. Everything has been um, has basically cleaned, has been inspected, has been sort of stripped down. The other two things I found were the uh, there were two um, of the hydraulic tappets, hydraulic uh, uh, valve followers, had also sheared their or lost their um, retaining pins, so they've been replaced as well. A couple of other gaskets that weren't in very good, good condition, and also during the dismantling, uh, I removed the thermostat. Um, the inside of the thermostat housing was actually quite in poor condition, so that's been in an acid soak for, for over a week now, um, and, and that's brought out quite nicely. Now we're going to be replacing the thermostat when that goes, uh, that goes back in. So today I was planning on getting everything back in, but I don't know if you can tell from the weather, uh, absolutely atrocious here. I did sit in the engine bay uh, earlier to try and lift some of the stuff in, um, but it was just rocking around so much. I decided to call it, uh, it, was, it was unsafe for me to be um, trying to lift um, basically 100 pounds, 150 pounds of um, cylinder head into and out of uh, position. Um, another 75 pounds worth of, or 75 pounds in weight of um, exhaust manifold, that kind of thing. Um, just wasn't, wasn't a safe thing to do. So um, I basically called it for today. However, cat still works. So these are the replacement gaskets that are going to be fitted. We'll start off with the main cylinder head gaskets, uh, two of these. Now the really good thing is, is here, uh, despite the fact that these did not come from a Volvo Pent dealership, they actually came from an automotive spares place. Uh, you can actually see here, this is the original um, gasket that came out of the, the engine uh, and this is the one that's going back in. They are exactly the same make, you know, made by the same company, made by the same manufacturer, uh, even with the same reference number. Next up is the inlet manifold gasket, as you can see here. Uh, again, it's an automotive part. Um, this is actually better quality than the one that came out. Uh, the one that came out was all one colour, uh, all one material. This one is um, a hybrid material, um, so it's uh, the two, two different densities of the material itself. Next up is the main exhaust gaskets, so these will go either side of the cylinder head onto the exhaust uh, manifold itself. Next we have the exhaust riser gaskets, so this is the, the one that failed basically. As you can see, it's only a small gasket, six pounds each uh, for these things. Um, and this is ultimately what's caused all of the trouble. And then finally, these are the two um, hydraulic valve lifters uh, as they came out of the packet. As you can see, um, they've got the retaining pins or retaining clips in the top surface there.
each of the hydraulic followers are held in place with a retaining collar. The retaining collar is held in place with this single piece spring. The spring has been removed and this will allow the collar to be lifted out and once the collar is lifted out each of the valve followers simply lift out of place. When replacing the valve follower it's important to make sure that the oil hole is orientated in the same direction. This new follower here has been coated with clean engine oil to make it slip back into the housing cleanly. It's a repetition of the same procedure for the other valve follower. With the new valve followers in place, just using a piece of paper towel, uh, removing all of the gunge and congealed oil that's been sitting in the valve valley uh, since the engine rebuild started. During this cleaning, I found both of the remaining pieces from the valve retaining clip that had uh, fallen out of the hydraulic follower. The retaining spring was simply refitted with the three bolts being tightened up using a half inch socket. By this point the engine has not turned for nearly three months. This has resulted in the pistons becoming stuck to the cylinder balls. A good soaking with WD-40 for several days, followed by a few gentle taps with a hammer on each of the piston crowns, helped to overcome this. Now the moment of truth is I'll try to rotate the engine by hand for the first time. As can be seen here, there is still a lot of loose debris inside the cylinders. And this was all cleaned out using a vacuum, brake parts cleaner and paper towel. The engine was also set to top dead centre on the timing marks for cylinder one, ready for the cylinder heads to be refitted.
After a further degreasing and wiping, the new head gasket can be put into place and then the cylinder head lifted carefully into position. The 17 cylinder head bolts were fitted just hand tight at first, but still paying attention to the correct tightening sequence. Once the bolts were hand tight, the first pass with the torque setting of 30 newton meters or 22 foot pounds was completed, again following the correct torque sequence. After the first pass, the second stage is a rotational setting. Here, using a rotation gauge, each bolt was rotated between 55 and 75 degrees, depending on its specific position. Here I'm just replacing the valve push rods. Each of the push rods has been cleaned and dipped into uh, clean engine oil before it's been installed. Once the push rods were in place, I've gone ahead and installed the rocker arms on each of the posts and just done the retaining nuts up just to hold them in place. These will be adjusted to adjust the valve lash and preload um, once both heads are installed. Then gone ahead and repeated exactly the same process, this time on the starboard side head using exactly the same tools and techniques as before. In the next episode I'll be setting the backlash and preload on the valve train, refitting the inlet manifold, resetting the ignition timing and then reinstalling the remaining parts to get the engine running. Please click on the like and subscribe buttons to get a notification of when the next episode goes live, but in the meantime stay safe and thanks for watching. <laughs>